Welcome to 15K Plus Random Movie Reviews, where we take random movies from Metacritic's 15K Plus Movies to randomly watch whether we like it or not. Hello and welcome to episode 24 of 15K Plus Random Movie Reviews. This is Colin. And this is Niall. And this is random movie number 101. It's called The Servant, and it's from 1963 or 64. Sometimes Metacritic puts an extra year onto it, and I don't know why. It's been very annoying for me to come across that every episode we do. Yeah, I've noticed that as well. I think it's possibly when it's, you know, theatrical releases and some other, you know, it depends on which country it's released. There can be a substantial time difference between countries that release releases, especially in older movies, as I've noticed. Yeah, so this one, The Servant, it has a meta score of 94, which is quite high, and a user score of 7.5, which is a little bit lower. It had a budget back in 1963 of 138,000, and it brought in box office 238,000 in the UK and 150,000 in the world. So it brought back a nice um, yeah, return. Well. Yeah, the director is Joseph Lossy, which um, he's done a lot of work, but nothing to crazy out there i think the most prolific dude that's involved is the cinematographer douglas slocum who did all mm. the indiana jones movies and jesus christ superstar and i think uh, the cinematography in this movie is actually pretty bloody good yeah i i, I noticed that as well like uh, some of the shots taken especially chap loved mirrors in this movie mm, <laughs> so they yeah. really but he used it to such effect Really yeah, good. it was really good. It was really well done, actually. Yeah, so, um, well, you you give it the plot in a nutshell, then. Yeah, um, at a very high ten thousand foot sort of synopsis of this, um, the movie, the servant is about hmm, a servant. Uh, there's a well-to-do chap. He's just back from Africa. He says at the start of the movie. Um, uh, at the very start of the movie, the servant, uh, Mr. Hugo Barrett, Barrett, uh, Barrett, um, is leaving a shop called Thomas Crack Crapper, which made me chuckle. I, I googled Thomas Crapper. Thomas Crapper that. invented the toilet. Yeah, and I was like, oh, sh- oh, crap! <laughs> 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 and I, I had a. I chuckled to myself immensely because I, I paused the movie because I was thinking that must be because it, uh, in the uh, title across the door of the shop, it was the uh, sanitation engineer or something like that. And mm-hmm. I, I had to stop and Google at that point. So that was a fantastic little, just in, in five seconds, I, I spent like 10 minutes. Anyway, <laughs> Mr. Barrett is leaving this shop and he walks towards this house, uh, lets himself in after knocking. And um, there's a man asleep on a deck chair, no furniture anywhere. Uh, one thing I love, the very early on, there's a bit of a foreshadowing of um, the sinister nature of Mr. Barish. Um, he's standing looking at the window, and his, his shadow just is blasted against the wall, and it looks kind of dark and, you know, mm-hmm. sinister. And I'm like, yes, I like where this is going. Anyway. Yeah. He bumps into, well, it doesn't bump it, but he wakes up his master to be a... Um, Tony. Tony. Poor Tony. <laughs> Mr. Tony, uh, the master, as he refers to him at this point, um, is asleep after having a couple of afternoon pints of beer. Um, anyway, long story short, to have a chat. It turns into a bit of an interview. Tony obviously doesn't really care too much. He seems a bit of a lazy fecker uh so he um pretty much hires him on the spot because mainly because he's not a nagging old woman that was his uh his line um so anyway yeah Next. so like in Sorry, essence yeah. without going through every fucking scene of the movie yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um yeah the servant he he gets hired and he manipulates and cajoles and uses little psychology tricks and gets Tony to become a crazy, just alcoholic inward shell of himself by the end of the movie. And it's a 
sick little journey and it's kind of well done. I kind of liked it in a way. I, I, I to be honest, I, I was a bit bored in the first half hour, maybe a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, it was a bit, bit traditional, you know, um, Tony was really grating on me. Um, if I'm honest, oh. um, her, her, his, um, fiance or girlfriend, Susan, Susan really annoyed the crap out of me. Um, but when things started to go a little bit awry for Tony, I really started enjoying this movie. Yeah. I think at the start, um, Barrett is sort of, <laughs> <laughs> he's very reverential and he's very, Dirk Brogard plays him very well. He's oh, so exceedingly well. He's very, he's very sort of, you know, oh, yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, your sir. You know, would you like a cigar, sir? Would you like a beer for lunch, sir? And he's very, he's very well, well, he but, but portrays the character well. There was a beautiful nuance in how he played it because there, there was a, a bit of a go fuck you in how he portrayed it, even though he's reverential towards his master. Mm. There was something behind it, I think, it especially when he, yeah. his master wasn't looking at him, there was a bit of a sneer in his face, which is a tiny bit. Yeah. Bur Burgard did a great job in portraying that, but so subtle. Yeah, and you could um, you could see the strands of hair coming looser. Yeah, in the, yeah. In the scenes when he's not actually serving, he's not being the servant. And I think actually, um, yeah. So you know, he goes through the job interview, he gets the thing. There's a bit of a party, and that doesn't really tell you much apart from no. Tony wanted uh, to go to Brazil to build cities I, in actually, Brazil. The Brazil. The Brazil scene, kind of what he's talking about to Susan about, yeah, I've got to build three cities and blah blah blah, like a, a lot of. BS for a start, but it, it showed Mr. Tony to be a, a bit of a blowhard, you know, like, um, I'm brilliant, la 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 la, but he's a lazy fecker. And it, it's obvious from the start that he's full of crap. Yeah. And he's a penchant, <laughs> he's penchant for a bit of booze during the day. Like he's yeah, a yeah, lager I, for lunch kind of guy, you know? I, I think this is what, uh, the servant Barrett! picked up Barrett. on very early. So he, he, he yeah. sensed weakness that he could exploit. I think the first time I saw Barrett, um, uh, like putting down his, his facade a little bit was when there was a very sort of brief, uh, section or clip when he had a little cigarette and a Guinness for a yeah, break. Yeah. I, yeah. You just see the little facade dropping a bit. Cause he's got a little bit of that sneer you're talking about earlier and just a bit of the few strands of hair being a bit disheveled and you're like, okay, where is this going? Cause I pretty much thought from the plot that he was just going to get with the, the, the fiance. I didn't know the entire direction it was going to go. Oh, it's, it's much more darker than that, buddy. <laughs> yeah. 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 So um, yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking as well. You know, something as simple and formulaic as that, but this, this doesn't go there, which is thank God, you know, it, it's a bit more nuanced and interesting. Yeah. And so like shortly after that, he kind of interrupts a little bit of personal time, you know, and, oh, and on Susan's on the sofa or on the floor. Yeah. Susan's angry. Susan's like going, what's he doing here? Yeah. Can't you make him live somewhere else? Yeah. And then, he, then the master says, Mr. Tony says, um, oh, what was I read that? Don't was it, um, Something about, oh yeah, he may be a servant, but he's also a human, which I thought that was yeah. out of character, a little bit of Tony, but I think this is where Barrett had started to get to him. Yeah, yeah, Barrett had twisted the knobs pretty, pretty, pretty quickly. Um, then there was the, the um, Tony was sick for, for a bit, and then uh, Susan brings flowers in in a vase to the room and puts them on the table. And then Barrett, Barrett wants to take them and she says, leave them. Yeah. It's like, yeah. okay, this is good. I like this. I like this, these communications. Um, yeah. She, 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 she didn't really get a, put her finger on it, but she knew there was something off with Barrett from the, from the get go. She just didn't like him with good reason. Yeah. I don't know if she, I don't know if she saw through him. I just, or maybe she's she, just an asshole. Yeah. I think she was a bit of a, cow but i, I think yeah, she, yeah. she uh i just don't think she liked the privacy that was being invaded what yeah. i really liked well first of all i just don't want to go through the first third of the movie without complimenting the cinematography just mm. to make sure because there's a lot of zooming and panning of the camera in sort of like one 
one shot takes very sort of birdman esque in a yeah. way yeah 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 um but i'm guessing it's actually done in one take and not edited together maybe perhaps from the 60s but from, from the from the budget and from the equipment they have absolutely yeah yeah i got that but, but really even the credits good. at the start the, 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 there was a one single pan of, a, of a, this area and then on the bar coming out of the shop and the timing of that itself was must have been you know <laughs> difficult yeah and as i actually i was writing i forgot to mention about that intro it's it sort of sets the mood for a very bleak yeah sort of london Winter. setting yeah it's depressing kind of already it's wet it's gray well it's black and white so it's gray anyway <laughs> <laughs> it's more um, gray gray yeah so the one the one scene i think is really important for setting up a major arc of the story but the scene in itself is so really really well done is the phone box scene where he's calling oh, quotation sister scene yeah vera vera and so like he's in the phone box and these women are outside just tapping on the door and there's a pov from his angle of the woman just banging on the window and mouthing words and it's just such a great well shot scene and and, and it only comes out of the box and the one that's been banging and on the door is is, is just outside yeah and kind of pushes her back and says get out of my way you Mm-mm-mm. biatch yeah you bitch yeah i was like yes this movie's going good now. I was like, because I was kind of bored up to this point, and then I was, you know, it, this is where things get interesting, in my in my opinion. It just, you know, at, at the introduction of Vera, effectively in that phone call. Yeah, and actually, the the next scene was actually really well done as well. It was just a really layered scene. So, like after the phone and phone box scene, there's this restaurant scene where we just see multiple yeah. tables having conversations, and they're, they've got nothing to do with the story, but it's just the fact that. It, at, at this point in the time, I, I thought this is like a play, like Harold Pinter, who yeah. screen, did the screenplay, he's obviously written a lot of plays in his time. And this was very much just character driven. Okay, these characters are going to talk, then these characters are going to talk, and then this one, these behind them. So, like the yeah. main, like, Couple Susan of bishops Tony. having a chat. Yeah, Bishop Brennan, I put him down as <laughs> he's in there, a couple of Irish bishops. Really? Like, yeah. Barrett. Um, <laughs> There's just these multi stories are happening. So it's Susan and Tony are having this, like they're front and center cinematography wise. And then there's two heads in between them in the booth behind yeah. them. And so I when there's know. gaps in the conversation, these people start talking in, in for their conversation. It's just really like a unique scene. It is, isn't it? Like I, I wrote down when I was taking notes, I said, this scene is weird, but I love it. Because it, yeah. it, I haven't seen anything like it before no. or since that time. Uh, and its uniqueness is is quite refreshing and i don't know if it would work if it was done all the time but i don't know it, it just it just works here yeah I was... the, the scenes are the, the conversations around them nothing to do with them it doesn't no. add to the story but it doesn't need to it, it adds flavor maybe but it, it's just so well done so well shot yeah it was really well done it kind of made me think uh, tarantino probably would do something like this you know yeah, yeah, I could see him having a oh, taste of that. And it kind of gave me vibes of the Pulp Fiction diner scene when, you know, Honey Bunny and <laughs> what's his butt are in there. And then we skip forward to the to the, the end of the movie and we hear their conversations that yeah. they said at the start of the movie. I just, I just, I had those little vibes from it. Yeah, but well, I think Tarantino would do it a little bit better. He'd, he'd intertwine their, yeah. the external conversation. And that's what he does in that in the diner scene. He intertwines several conversations into one story and then intersects them. And it's just a beautiful thing. This is a little bit less complicated, but still good. Yeah, no, I think I think for what it is, yeah, I think maybe if they're all involved, because I was thinking later on with the when the prostitutes came in, are they in that scene you know like obviously yeah. not the bishops but you know bishops so the actress at a bishop yeah um yeah and then like yeah there's a couple of scenes in a row actually then susan and tony go to their to a friend's mansion or whatever and they're just they're all posed around the room very play like you know it's all very, very stiff very you know proper it's clear in that picture that Tony doesn't really enjoy himself in that scene, I don't think. You know, yeah. around, around the people that he's around there, so he's not really enjoying himself. He's outside of his 
not, I'm not going to say comfort zone. It purely is his comfort zone, but he doesn't want to be there by the looks of it. Yeah, and also I think it's 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 there's a commentary on just the oh, idiocy of the commentary. upper class as well yeah. because they talk talking about like Susan's going yeah they're ponchos it's named after the after the coats and they're going no no they're close. no 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 that's the that's the cowboys and she's like what what she's like going yeah whatever um so then like so obviously from the phone for the phone box scene we're thinking of oh, Vera is his sister right didn't oh. you know, like, <laughs> and then in the next scene she comes in after she's obviously beginning work in in Tony's house and she comes in and, and sits on the uh, table all sultry like and Barrett goes in yeah. for the kill yeah and uh, you know I'm I'm, I'm, I'm kind of happy that she doesn't turn out to be his sister <laughs> or at least I'm assuming she doesn't because it never actually says uh, for definite that she isn't pretty sure she isn't yeah but yeah I think, I think that he, that he's, then we he's coming know. in oh sorry you, you go no, ahead no go ahead it, it's clear that Something's afoot here, and uh, and Barrett's about to make a play on these guys because it, it's it's an organized and orchestrated thing that he would put it in Tony's head that they also needed a maid, and he'd get his sister in. So there's, yeah. there's something else to, play, else to play more than just getting the job off some posh git. Yeah, I think a scene quite quickly that happens after this really just makes the whole entire plot just turn. 90 degrees it's when tony goes to the bathroom and vera's taking a bath or whatever and then tony yeah. leaves and then bart just goes insane he goes in and goes ah oh, pour that cologne all over me <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh yeah that's the stuff that's, oh that. it's cold yeah so i was yeah. like oh my god like this is that's barrett what are you doing like this is mr barrett who's serving breakfast in bed now he's like sitting down taking his top off going all right vera pour all that cologne over me yeah it really it segues hard <laughs> you oh, know yeah. Uh, yeah. like it, there's, there's no effing about here it, it, it lets you know what's happening at this point Bar yeah. barrett ain't barrett oh barrett's 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 fucking playing around he's going nuts he's like this is him this is he, he he's kind of what's the word he's just an i think he may be an egomaniac or something i think he's just very Oh, he's a psychopath anyway. Absolutely, he's a bit of a psycho. psycho. Yeah, yeah. Quite a lot of the scenes actually angles remind me of Psycho. Actually, the, the sort of camera angles, the bit of dramatic sort of angles when they're looking up the stairs later on. Uh, yeah, especially the, the the dark lighting and it's just Barrett's face lit up when he's in the, the hide and seek scene, which we can talk about later. Oh yeah, yeah. But that's that, that's very very Psycho, and it's so well shot. Oh. That's a weird part of the movie, and we'll get to it pretty soon. <laughs> That's why I really start loving this movie. We'll get to that later. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Barrett and Vera go off somewhere, and it just basically shows uh, Tony just not surviving. He goes to a restaurant and doesn't get served. <laughs> or something oh, that's a... right and he gets really annoyed because of some guy he's playing um yeah blues be... music and it really yeah, irritates him yeah that'd be that'd be annoyed too he's right behind him it's like and then he's trying to get the waitress's attention it's like he can't even go out to a restaurant and get served the food and he comes home and uh vera pops in and then vera woos him for want of a better oh phrase. yeah he's just barrett's gone to see the sick mummy but i went home oh, i, I didn't want to be all there. alone and back up on the same table where she woos barrett mm. now she's a great actress she's oh no actress. she's fine on she's very yeah. good at this yeah and then um i think next probably susan comes in and she's like really really demanding of Barrett. she doesn't move in she just comes back after she's been like missing from the movie for like 20 minutes or so yeah well i think she's been m missing on purpose because she's intimidated by Barrett. because i remember she said something or he says something to her what was it uh the, it doesn't look good does it the weather oh the weather yes. <laughs> yeah and she's like ooh, ooh, and walk, walks outside and then hugs a the lamppost because she's breaking it <laughs> we've all yeah. hugged lampposts <laughs> <laughs> yeah don't don't you do that when you're upset for different reasons <laughs> um but i like the scene where she comes in and she's just de just de demanding things off them you know like, yeah well, i think, think she made a decision to, to, to kick back a little bit yeah take Have control of the house yeah yeah take you know she's got flowers and it's like she's like 
yeah, what do you think it is? And he's like, oh, oh, but it's yeah. too late at this point, realistically, because um, oh yeah, Barrett's got Barrett's, Barrett's, Barrett's got already control. won by setting up the the Vera thing with with, yeah. with, with Tony. Yeah, so Vera basically has yeah they've they've just blackmailed already without him even knowing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So where are we at in the thing? Oh yeah. So yeah. So they um, they're out one night. They're they're, they're they're in the mansion. They're dancing. They're dancing in the snow, having a snowball fight or whatever. And uh, oh, they say, yes. "Oh, let's go home early and just you know." whatever and this scene is great i love this scene where they come back early and there's oh, my, my bedroom lights on it's so good and, and then and the look on tony's face you know they go into the house and <laughs> then just just uh, the noise of um barrett and his sister yeah. having a bit of fun upstairs in his room in his bed uh and himself and susan are just downstairs and they're both horrified, disgusted, and scared to make noise for a while. Yeah, and you've got this dramatic angle of them looking up at the staircase yeah. and shadows, or but but know. then this is this is where the, the cinematography is just excellent. It's where beautiful. Barrett says, "Hey, maybe there's somebody down there." I thought I heard something, and he yeah. clips out to the door, slams it open, and he's standing there in the nip. Now you don't see him in the nip; no. you see the the shadow of him. Yeah cast against the wall and it's so good it's really so very good yeah and so then um yeah susan's like going why what's what's the problem what aren't you kicking them out and tony's just barrett yeah he does do a barrett but he but he's also you can just see him he's he's just torn because he's got the secret of vera yeah we didn't know at this point that barrett knows Wait, that, that's why he has the testicular fortitude to shout, Barrett! Barrett! Yeah, yeah so but it doesn't, it, it doesn't go well for yeah, poor Tony. Yeah, so then Barrett comes in and goes, oh, well, me and Fear are, she's my fiance, she's not my sister. And then he calls her down and she's playing her suave, demure character. And then she says, well, you can't have it both ways. Mm-hmm. And Susan's like, eh, yeah. what? Uh, what's that, Mister yeah. Mister Tony? And uh, that's the beginning of the end and the beginning of the downfall of Tony, basically, because Susan then is out of the picture. Well, he does have he does have the sense to kick the pair of them out at this he point. Does. So Barrett out, get out, Barrett. Effectively, yeah, but he, but before they just grab paintings and oh, shit, just grab a whole lot of stuff from the way out, chucking right. as they go. No, they're having a great time. So then, like, we still got about 40 minutes left in the movie, and I'm like going, what the hell? Yeah, I was so very end? surprised by that, because I thought, well, that's kind of the end, right? <laughs> it's, yeah. but no, it takes another 90-degree turn where Tony's in a pub one day, and on the other... So, so he's, been, is... he's, been, he's been boozing it up for a while, though. There's a few scenes of him just drinking away, and he's by himself. House is absolutely in a mess because he doesn't oh, yeah. have a manservant anymore. Yeah. Uh, this pub scene is another wild oh. shot scene as well it was beautifully uh Len Brennan, Len Brennan's back in this one is he yeah well there's a bishop that turns up in this as well for one of the lads from the restaurant is actually in this scene briefly oh really speaking with an Irish accent oh um, yeah in the middle yeah 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 okay yeah, yeah, yeah. not for long he, he talks to Tony and Tony's like Neh. Yeah, the Irish accent yeah yeah I'm not sure what that is maybe it's just some maybe the tie-in scenes um, I'm not sure it adds much. I just thought it was humorous. Yeah, he's, he's you know, the Irish drunk. Yeah, well done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well done, Mr. <laughs> Losey, director. Anyway, like at the end of the day, basically, uh, Barrett's there and he gives him a bit of a sob story that Vera messed off with somebody else. And give me another chance, sir. Uh... Of course, Tony's in a right old state at this point he's lonely he's got nothing he doesn't have susan house is in bits because he's a useless fecker um and obviously he says ah oh, go on then yeah and so the next 40 minutes is just like it's such a crazy weird dynamic it's like the odd couple but on yeah. crack yeah yeah and you know it starts off they're they're almost like roommates a married know? couple they're like the yeah, first married couple. Back. 
yeah. First, yeah, the first scene back, he's at the dinner table and he's going, ah, if you cleaned up after yourself, we should, we'd be well, better Maybe you off. should clean up after yourself, you dirty fecker. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a load of that. And it's quite good. You know, it's, it's very, yeah. a banter between the two lads. And it looks like for a while, Tony's having a little bit of fun with a friend. Yeah, but it's just this weird dynamic, and they're like they're yep. playing lots of games, and there's they're and playing this weird ball game in the, <laughs> in the in the stairway, and like it's such a long scene, and then at the end of the scene, Tony throws the ball to hit a statue off the plinth. So it's like, how many takes did that take? Dick? No, that, that was good shot. Great. It was a great shot. I was like, that's amazing. And then yeah, you ever want to if you want to describe the hide and seek one? Oh no, this is great. Um, Actually, no, before that, hang on. Yeah, I just I just wanted to mention. Yeah, I just wanted to mention this because it's pivotal, I think, because you know it's still right. He's this like, now he he brought him back as a servant, but from minute one he's not really the servant. They're kind of on equal equal terms. They have this little back and forth a little bit, and at the end of it, Barrett just goes, "Well, I'll go and pour me a glass of brandy then," and he goes. He, he, yeah, he, the, the, yeah, the the power dynamic is just one one eighty. Like, yeah, he's 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 won at this point. Like, he controls Tony. There's still tiny bit glimpses of what Tony used to be in there, but he has him under his thumb, yeah. and he's pretty much doing what he's he's been paid to be served upon as the servant. So he's won. Yeah. He's the class dynamic has shifted completely, and yeah. Tony's a broken man. And I think they both describe each other as two pals. Then after that, yeah. then the uh, hide and seek the hide and seek scene is weird. Oh, I love it. So so it starts off with uh, Barrett coming up the stairs and he's really sinister. He's like, I'm coming to get you. I know where you're hiding. And uh, Tony is behind a shower curtain. So here's where the psycho mm. um, comparison is. And it's really dark, well lit. You can just about make out Tony's face. And all you can really make out of uh, Barrett is his face. And it's well, it's lit in such a way that it's, the shadows are very pronounced. And he's so intimidating in this scene. It's scary. And he, he slowly goes up the stairs and he's growling effectively, mm. kicks in the door of the bathroom, pulls back the curtain, and Tony starts sc basically screaming like a little girl. And it's yeah. so good. <laughs> yeah, we see, we, see the, we see the POV from Barrett going towards Tony's face and Tony's just grimacing in fear. I think, yeah. obviously, it's he's... He's mental at this stage. <laughs> he can't. Oh yeah, he's, he's beyond broken. He's a shadow. He's a shell of his former yeah. self. He's he's gone. Yeah. And um, it's, yeah. It, yeah. It, it just goes really, just goes really downhill now. He's just he's he's fecting. Yeah, he's he's screwed. Yeah, it's yeah. We're you know we're wrapping it up here. Vera returns. So this is another little layer of uh, deceit. Basically, he, she comes in and goes, "Oh, can you?" Can you talk to me for a bit? And then Tony's like going, yeah, yeah, come in. And then blah, blah, blah. She says, I still love you. And then um, Barrett comes in and goes, get out of oh, here. Get and out of the fuck, what? Yeah. And then there's just this beautiful look that Barrett gives her in the hallway. This look yeah, of knowing. Yeah. And then they step outside. and A little bit of a wink and a nudge. Like, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, good work there. Great. We have them now. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, just near the end there, just... Um, uh yeah he's sort of like he's i think tony's trying to get out of it and then there's this just one scene near the end where barrett's just going here there's a little just a little sip of yeah, this dark yeah. liquor and then he just takes something like jägermeister that would do that to me as well to be honest well, yeah jägermeister sucks yeah yeah because he said no no i have to stop drinking I'm, i said i told you already i'm finished with drinking now and barrett's like no no just one little bit sure yeah. don't i always know what's best for you yeah, and then at some point he just says, oh, the, place, <laughs> the place could be cleaner or something like that. <laughs> yeah, uh, and says, like, really? Really could it? Yeah. And then Tony's like, well, we could both make an effort maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, the final scene is just this weird scene. Where oh, this, this is Clockwork Orange, fantastic. Kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very just bizarre. Susan returns and there's a party happening. It's just four prostitutes basically in Vera. And uh, it's just, Tony is just, you can't even talk. He's just a shell of a person just falling over things. And I think Susan loses it and just goes and kisses Barrett and Barrett, like just kind of like 
aggressively kisses her back and then susan's just kind of horrified freaking out. Going on. yeah yeah freaking out and stuff and then yeah so it looks like bad. it's almost broken horror and it didn't take long to do it mm. yeah yeah so like he's, he's breaking everybody basically Tony just goes nuts or sort of just, just trying to say something, but he folds over everything and all the prostitutes laugh and then yeah. Bart goes, all right, everybody out, get the fuck out. That's it, really. And that's pretty much it. There's just a load of nightmare angle, camera angles near the end and lots of banister railings because Tony is just lying up in the banisters with a brand the more glass. mirror shots. Don't forget the mirror shots. Very important. Beautiful mirror shots. And then like the end of the movie is just... Barrett and Vera going up to bed, laughing and cheering. Oh, and, then. And, and Tony lying at the, on the carpet outside the room, effectively. Yeah. Just and then it holding goes, a brandy. Uh, yeah, then it goes like it, it it pans over to the to the uh, grandfather clock because a lot of th- a lot of the time during the movie, chimes and bell chimes mm. were, were a common theme throughout the movie, as well as telephone rings as well, which sort of punctuated the soundtrack like quite quite loud. So I think, you know, something about the clock near the end that I'm not smart enough to realize. Uh, no, neither am I. But it, but maybe, it looked dramatic. <laughs> yeah, it was good. It was good. It was a good panning shot and was like, yeah, that actually, that ending suits this movie. It does. It does. Yeah. So um, One thing I'd say about this movie before we jump off. Yeah. Other than Hugo wins, clearly. Um, I was like, Hugo Barrett. Uh, <laughs> is, I don't know if you've seen a movie called Parasite. Korean. I did see it, yes, yes. So it, I seen while the servants in that aren't psychopaths, what well, they probably are psychopaths actually when I think about it. Yeah. But they're not sinister, they're not evil. Like Bart clearly is just a monster. But there's a lot of similarities where they inject themselves into the the, the house. True, true, yeah. Like but we see a lot of the background of the characters in parasite we see their yeah. house they came from we don't know barrett's background no no he's he's, he's a blank slate really but you know yeah. he's character i suppose his character develops as he injects himself into the house with tony and susan and slowly takes control of the entire place yeah i just wonder like it could be a it's, it's a good movie but it could be a lot better but i'm, but I'm not i'm not a movie director i'm not tarantino obviously i think maybe if it went if he did actually go a couple more notches up the sinister scale and maybe like got away with like poison and susan or something whatever you know something a little bit more twisted as well that might that might have rat- ratcheted up the this the, the weirdly pressure I, I think if they'd gone sinister earlier it might have been good um and I think maybe the last scene, the one I described as um, this, like the Stanley Kubrick style Clockwork Orange thing, was maybe a little too far, for for me anyway. Um, I think right up to that point, the last half of the movie was great. That maybe was a nudge too weird. <laughs> um, not sure I I fully believed Susan mm. breaking so quickly, having not being around it for a while yeah yeah i don't know what she was thinking there at all like i haven't really watched a lot of harold pinter stuff like i know his name and i know he's quite famous yeah. for making making plays and doing a couple of screen adaptations and i think he did three joseph lossy movies but uh, i think this is the most famous one yeah i would say so like i couldn't really see much else in the in the movie front anyway yeah so <clears throat> plot wise, I've just actually uh, scored them now and I'm talking about it because I couldn't really think last night when I watched it. Like, is this a good movie? Yeah, so it was good. So there was times where I was like going, eh. but uh, no, I, I agree completely. There, there, there were bits in this movie I was, I was getting bored, but then there was bits in this movie where I was on the edge of my seat going, yes, more of this. Yeah, I think I'm going to give the plot three out of five. I think it's above average. I think it's well done. I think the dialogue and the interactions between the characters drive the plot. I don't think the plot's convoluted or complicated. I think it's doesn't need simple. to be really doesn't need to be. I think it's it's the interactions between the characters that, that drive it. What do you think? Yeah, I I I'd, I'd, I'd concur with your tree. Um 
a good movie, not a not a great movie. It it had the chance to be a great movie, as you said, mm. but there's a couple of things that knock it back a little bit. I'm afraid. Yeah. And so the plot is good, and it it, does, it more than does the job, I suppose. Yeah, it's been a it's it's kind of stands out to me actually for the last couple of movies we've watched. Yeah, it's yeah. been a, quite good um, acting. So Dirk Bogard, um, we Perfect. know his name. I don't really know much of his movies, but he's a famous actor. I did look up a couple of of his movies, and there's actually a movie that I've heard of before, but I never watched. Bridge too far. Exactly. Have you watched yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, I've seen that years ago. It's a good movie. It's a very good movie. There's so I many. I can't really remember because I was a kid. I watched but... the trailer for it this evening, and there's so many people in it. There's so many actors in it. Sean Connery is in oh. it to to reference <laughs> the William nice, Ryan. nice tie-in. Yeah, I thought so. Um, but like uh, Gene Hackman is in it, and Laurence Olivier, and uh, lots of like pretty much twenty A list. A list at the time, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Um, Sarah Miles, who played Vera, played uh, Ryan's daughter in the movie Ryan's Daughter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got an Oscar nomination for that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I don't think, I, I think I watched Ryan's Daughter once, but I can't remember. I I, I've never seen it, the... I'm honest. I, like, I've, seen, I've seen it in her list here, but I, I, it doesn't really ring a bell with me. I think Americans like it more than Irish people. Yeah. Um, Wendy Crane is it? I can't remember. Krang, 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 Krang from Teenage Wendy Ninja Craig, Turtles. Craig. That's it. Yes, yes. Played Susan. Done a lot of British TV stuff. Wait, uh, she's very famous in the in the UK sitcom market. Yeah, 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 yeah. But nothing crazy movie wise. And James Fox who played Tony. He's been in a lot of TV stuff as well, but nothing crazy big. So he just kind of yeah, introducing he's... James Fox was the main yeah. title at the start of the movie. He's he's good in this. Yeah, I thought so. He's yeah. fine. But I think um, I think that ones that stand out for me is obviously Dirk Bogart as oh, Barrett and Sarah Miles as Sarah Miles as Vera is really good too. She's just. Yeah. She plays a lot of emotions on her, her face, and yeah, it's, it's quite layered. I, I gave the act very well. Sorry, she does duplicity quite well. You know, the, the timid little uh, maid versus yeah. somebody who is ripping your life apart at the same time. Yeah, um, I gave the acting three point five out of five. I give it a bit more than the plot. I think the acting, if the acting wasn't good, then the movie wouldn't have been as good. I'm right with you there. 3.5. Um, yeah. You know, some of the external actors, they don't matter, I suppose. But some of them no. are a bit. They, like the, the bishops. <laughs> <laughs> Kicking Bishop oh, yeah. Brennan up Listen, the horse. But Bogart, amazing. Absolutely amazing. And Sarah, fantastic. So, can't yeah. complain. Yeah, I think they Tony drive. Good. Yeah, I think they drive the... Uh, I think they drive... Sorry, James the, Fox, not Tony. Sorry. <laughs> Tony was good. Um, yeah. Uh, Sound Brackets track, I didn't like the music. It repeated way too much the same uh, sting throughout the entire movie. But th the music is cack. I enjoyed the guy playing blues, actually. I thought that was very good. Um, but <laughs> everything else in the music is formulaic, irrelevant. But the music being bad, but then the sound is quite good. Some of the, as you you're talking about earlier, like the phone ringing and and like it's like it's it's used to great effect. Like the, uh, there's one scene actually I forgot to mention. I have it written down. It was the tap oh, when yeah. Vera's that's come good. back from the train station, um, and the yeah. tap is tapping away, and Tony's almost like a a rabbit in headlights. Yeah, clearly fancies her. She knows it too, and he and she's kind of ensnaring him, and the taps tipping away, and it's just building up the tension. So well done. So, so the sound is quite well used, but the music's so awful. The music's awful. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, there's so many great scenes in this movie when you think. Isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. John Dunkworth did the movie, did the soundtrack. He hasn't really done anything, but he was a big uh, clarinet clarinet dude so that obviously <laughs> plays throughout the entire movie yeah, yeah. And, they give, uh, give him 20 quid and told him to play non-stop 
Yeah. Actually, I wasn't very happy with the footstep noises either. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's your yeah, you and the footsteps mean the rubber swords. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the second movie now where I know a lot of sixties movies do really, really, really loud footsteps just to make up for the microphone is not picking it up, but yeah, this was really, really fake. Sorry. Yeah. You're gonna um, kill the Foley artist. Yeah, I would kill the Foley artist. He's dead. Barrett. <laughs> um, uh, the music, oh, the sound brackets track. I'm giving one point seven five, even with the uh, shrill telephone noises and the, and the yeah. taps. That's more production choice than sound. Yeah, I give you that. I, I put it down as two. I am giving giving it some points because of those features. I probably shouldn't. I should stay in production, but I. I feel like being generous. Yeah, I, I was I was scraping out two and putting down one point seven five. Then I put down two again, but then I went back to one point seven five. Yeah, it, it's like that though. When you're talking about these movies and you remember bits and pieces, bits that annoy you, bits like obviously the footsteps has annoyed you to put that back down to one point seven five. Yeah, it's my pet hate in movies. <laughs> now you know. Um, production then, like I think, excellent framing, excellent oh. camera work. Douglas Slocum. Um, he, yeah, he was a cinematographer. So he, uh, yeah, well, he also did cinematography for the, for the Italian job, if you remember that uh, car over the cliffs. Yeah, and he's supposed to blow the bloody doors off. off. Yeah. Yes, I remember. Um, that. Also, I was doing, I just went, I went through the cast because I wanted to see who the camera grip was. And it's a name, this guy called Frank Howard, not Frankie Howard. Frank <laughs> Howard. Oh, oh. Matron. No, that's Kenneth Williams. Um, that's Kenneth Williams. <laughs> no, it's R of Pompeii. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's Frankie Hart. Um, he actually did camera work for Three Sisters. Get away. Not our movie, The Sisters, but a 1970 uh, adaptation of, of the same Sisters of the same story. Wow. I'd imagine yeah. that's a lot better than the one we had to endure. Most likely, yeah. Most likely. Hmm. So I like throughout this entire movie, I was fascinated by the camera work, yeah, and the angles they took and the mirror reflections and just the framing of people's faces. So actually, up to a few seconds ago, I had three point five. I'm going to give it three point seven five. Stop copying me. Just that's it. So the four. I put the same down. I um, the production is just really good. Um, yeah. I don't think it had a massive, massive budget, so it probably knocks it back a little bit because of that. But what what they've done with with simple effects and simple shots, and and, and the choice of shots is just so good. Yeah, yeah. Fair play to Joseph Lossy. I think he's yeah. dead. Yeah. Well done, dead person. He's <laughs> probably dead a while now. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting going through all these people in the backgrounds of these movies and seeing that whether they're dead or alive. I think the actors are all well, Dirk Bogut's dead, but I think uh, Sarah Miles is alive. James Fox is alive. I think Wendy Craig's alive. Yeah, James Fox. Yeah, he was in. Um... Oh, what was it called? Not Jamie Fox. <laughs> that was. That's where I was going. Yeah, I knew <laughs> you were. Yeah, the yeah. Tarantino movie. Ah. Oh, Django Unchained. Django Unchained, God damn it. Yeah, yeah, that would have been funny. If, if I could remember. Use my brain for a second. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here's the deal. That's the end of uh, The Servant, which was great. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was an enjoyable watch. And it was much better than I thought of. Sometimes these old movies are a bit... They don't age well. I think this aged quite well. Yeah, because I think it's a bit edgy as well. Like, there's a couple Very of... Very edgy, yeah. Actually, there's a, like, there's a bit of back nudity in the bathroom scene. I know. As well. yeah, Ooh, Vera. Raunchy. Yeah. It's a little bit raunchy showing the back. Um, Adam Smith in Empire gave the servant 60 out of 100. It said, certainly difficult to define. This period piece messes with genres, power relationships, and your head. Absolutely. That's a good explanation of the movie. Bad. And then uh, Peter Bradshaw and the Guardian gave it 100 out of 100. Ah. It is a brilliant subversive account of class relations and the changing times. So, yes, that. give them yeah. that. Okay. I don't know about 100 out of 100. Um, all right. So, let's pick the next episode. Um, if people listen this far, we will let you into a secret. Metacritic has changed their website. 
And so the numbers are messed up, but we're still going to pick a random movie and that's all you need to know about it. <laughs> so the algorithm has changed, I'm afraid. Yeah, yeah, the algorithm has changed, but we haven't changed our algorithm. So let's uh, randomize and see what we get. <clears throat> we got 12,094. Okay, what's that mean in new money? Yeah, and new money, that's not going to be too bad, to be honest with you. So let's see what it is. All right, movie 12,094 is a movie from 2004 called Hidalgo, PG-13, two hours and 16 minutes, bloody hell. Uh, it's got a meta score of 54. Uh, if this was two weeks ago, this movie would be in the 12 or 20 rating out of 100, but they've changed their algorithm, so it's a bit better. And the user score is 8.1, so the users mm. love this better than the critics. Um, the the summary is based on the story of long distance rider Frank T. Hopkins. Hidalgo is an epic action adventure and one man's journey of personal redemption. It's got Vigo Mortensen, Omar yeah. Sharif, and that's or oh, J.K. Simmons is in it. Uh, uh, I have to admit that it, I think it might have been on terrestrial TV, uh, and I do remember turning it off. <laughs> So that's good. Well, well, sorry, you won't be able to do that now. No, no, no. Um, and maybe it redeems itself this time. Maybe, maybe. Okay, so that's Hidalgo, and that'll be in episode 25 of 15K Plus Random Movie Reviews. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, do whatever the hell you want to do wherever you listen to it. Pay, and, pay money to us on Patreon, don't forget that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we don't have Patreon, but it's PayPal. Or oh, just send us money, yeah. Yeah, and a brown paper envelope. Barrett. <laughs> uh, that's 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 it for episode twenty-five. Bye bye. Bye bye.